Hey everybody, this is Carl with Trial Byte Studios. And this is Josh. And today we're talking about um, a topic in the paleontology community that is, I wouldn't say controversial. Um, well, it wasn't controversial until one very ugly uh, paleontologist <laughs> decided to uh, stick his nose into, well, I guess it is business where he belongs because he is a paleontologist. But we're going to be talking about the, um, the topic of uh, Tyrannosaurus rex and whether or not it was a predator or a scavenger. And I'm kind of firmly in the predatory camp, mostly because I hate Jack Horner, but also because it just makes sense. It makes more sense that Tyrannosaurus Rex was a predator and not a scavenger. Now, I'm not saying that it wouldn't scavenge. Like, that's kind of stupid. That's like if you were hungry and you walked across a refrigerator you came across a refrigerator with nobody around and you were just like, well, that's not my refrigerator, so I'm not going to eat that. So I think that, you know, of course, all animals are opportunistic, right? Every predator is opportunistic. If something comes across a corpse or a carcass and they can eat it, they're going to eat it. But there's no way, at least in my mind, that you can get to be 40 feet long, 45 feet long, 40 to 45 feet long. And that's not even a full grown specimen, right? There's no way you can get to be 45 feet long and like upwards of what, 15 tons without actively hunting. You just cannot sustain yourself on carcasses and get that big. Plus, so we're, I, I'm specifically thinking about the one special it was like a, a documentary where they had Jack Horner on and he presented like this new model of Tyrannosaurus Rex where it Oh, the Valley of the Rex. Yeah, where it looked like a, a like a buzzard. Which I'm not saying that it didn't look like that, but I it, that's just it was so ugly. <laughs> so the, the only thing that uh special had going for it was the T Rex model. Yes. I mean to at the time of that special, that was the, actually the most scientifically accurate model. Yeah, it was just ugly. And I don't like Jack Horner. I mean, the paint job was a little rough. But yeah, the paint job was I mean, atrocious. The way I see it is like this, okay? Yeah. Uh, and try to f follow along. Sure. No, you listen, to my, you listen to my base argument. Now let me listen to your base argument, and then we'll go back. Um, I do agree that uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex was a opti mostly a predatory hunting animal. But like you said, it probably did scavenge when available. Uh, if we look into an ecosystem like Africa, the T-Rex is the lion. He's the king of the domain. Yes, lions can uh, hunt. We've seen them hunt. There's hundreds of documentaries of them hunting. But it also sh there's also documentaries where it, he he'll run up on a, a cheetah or a hyena or uh, a wild dog pack and literally take uh, its food. So the way I'm seeing it is it can hunt, but if the opportunity presents itself, it's probably going to use a uh, scavenge from another predator much more frequently because it's less calories he has to put out and is getting all of that reward. Sure. No, I, I get and Especially that. the larger of the animal, the animals are, they're probably not moving that well. Arthritis and all that stuff is, we've seen it in the fossils. Bones have been broken, probably didn't heal correctly. So if that animal, now we don't know if they're going to be in uh, a mating pair or, or loners or a family pack, whatever. We don't know how they... Uh, lived in a social uh hierarchy so a big male lone t-rex he's going to probably scavenge a lot more than going out hunting especially if he has you know older in age or t a tooth that's broke stuff like that so i see where jack corner is coming from where scavenging especially on the larger uh size but the healthy adults, the you know animals in their prime, the younger animals that are just becoming adults, the sub-adults, they're probably hunting. Um, 
and they're probably even being chased off by larger T-Rexes. I mean, when T-Rex was first discovered, uh, the first two were actually going to be a, uh, carna a uh, carnivore uh, display where one T-Rex had uh, a Montosaurus down, it was eating, and another one towering over it going, look how big I am, now give me your food. That was the original uh, plan. However, one of the uh, fossils were sold to another museum and that was a whole never ha that uh, display never happened um, but yes we have evidence that T-Rex did hunt uh, with triceratops bite marks yes um, there was an amontosaurus tail fragment that was bitten and healed well you can't heal if you're dead yeah um, so there's a lot of evidence that showed T-Rex as a hunter but I definitely can see a larger, the larger and older animals probably did uh, do more scavenging, just because their body couldn't actually take the uh, going hunting uh, aspect. Yeah. So that that's my opinion. I I, um, I don't know if you have anything you want to debate on that one. No, that that makes a lot of sense. I I would agree with most of those points, um, especially like the idea that. Uh, you know, like comparing it to a lion where, you know, cause obviously lions, uh, live in prides except for lone male lions who have to leave their pride and then find it, find one or take over one or start one. Um, so the idea, and, and we have seen in nature where lions will come up on carcasses and use their size to intimidate, uh, other animals into giving up that carcass. But you know, the, when I think about scavenging, too, I also I always think about, like, Yellowstone, where, like, wolves will take down something and then a bear will walk up on the wolves, like a grizzly bear will walk up on the wolves and, and take the carcass away. But we also see in nature where... So I think it makes perfect sense for older individuals to well, be... We have a video of grizzlies hunting elk calves in uh, yeah. Yellowstone. Exactly. It's not saying that a grizzly can't do it. Right. It's... Which would you prefer? Do you want to right. a run and possibly hurt yourself, or just, or do you just want to steal <laughs> uh, steal another animal's uh, food? Right, and so that's what that's kind of what my my argument is getting at. And I don't think it's really even a debate of whether or not it was. I I don't know if it was. I, I it's not really a debate of whether or not it is it was a hunter or if it was a scavenger. I think the debate is which was it primarily. Right? Because all animals are opportunistic. No animal is going to give up a free meal. And some animals, like grizzly bears, will use their size to take carcasses, but we've also seen grizzly bears hunt. Um, so what it comes down to, at least for me, is, it, you know, when you're, when you're talking about biology and when you're talking about animals, it, it really all comes down to risk-reward and it comes down to calories in versus calories out versus risk. It, it's it's risk-reward. If you put in more calories getting a, a game animal than you get back from eating said animal, then what was the point of hunting? You, should, you, you shouldn't have even hunted. At that point, you would have been better off just sitting there. Um, my point, though, is it's, it's really hard to get really big without actively searching for calories. When you look at other scavengers in the wild that are primarily scavengers hyenas we know they hunt but they're primarily scavengers um birds like buzzards we know they that sometimes they'll hunt but they are mostly like 99 percent scavengers these animals don't get super big they kind of just get up to a size where they can walk up onto something in a group and take it but they don't have to but they couldn't do it by themselves you see what I'm, what I'm getting at? Yeah, I it's understand. hard to get to the top of the food chain in nature if you're and, and to get that big if you're if if your body plan is better for scavenging because this is also kind of a debate with the short base short faced bear right um but if your body plan is designed for scavenging you almost don't need to get that big it's easier to just kind of be smaller be quicker be able to get to another carcass faster, get on that carcass before the other animals do, than to try to hunt it and be bigger than necessary. 
or try to get there and be bigger than necessary because you know you're gonna slow down when you get bigger too yeah but when you're the biggest baddest guy on the block you're not really worried about what does the other guy look like and uh, that's going back to the whole lion and hyena or even the wolves and uh uh grizzly bear i mean grizzlies are freaking huge yes we know they scavenge from wolves. We've seen it on uh, in doc in documentaries. You're gonna t- uh, try to convince a grizzly that he didn't have to be that big uh, to well, do we, that. We've also seen, you know, smaller animals like hyenas fight off other like like lions. Yeah, sometimes and they're they, usually they, more in a pack. Exactly, and it's usually like one or two lions. Right. So, I mean, I feel like scavenging almost works better when your body plan and when you're when you're in a pack because it's easier to walk up on a carcass. Like, yeah, if you're a big guy, you're the toughest, baddest guy there. Ninety, well, not even ninety percent of the time. I'd say like forty percent of the time, you roll up on a carcass, no, nobody's gonna stop you, right? But the other sixty percent of the time, you roll up on a carcass and there's like five or six other guys there that aren't as big as you, but they're pretty big pretty bad you're not going to want to stick around and fight for that carcass no and it's probably was doing uh threat displays or you know coming in roaring or well not roaring but at least vocalizing in some form or fashion uh to let everyone know that hey you arrived and it's now yours i yeah. mean they're probably i mean let's be honest when a t-rex walks in everybody's going to know about it yeah just from yeah, its foot, you know, has uh, padding and stuff to quiet muffle its walk. However, it's still a lot of animal walking. True. There's going to be, uh, you know, seismic uh, feeling from that. He's probably vocalizing or some type of uh, display that says, hey, I'm here. You know, look how big and uh, nasty I am. And if you're a Dakota Raptor or Nano Tyrannus in that environment, do you really want to stick around to find out if you can take them? True. I mean, I mean, the we, animal world is full of bluff, attack, yeah, and uh, defense. And ninety percent of the time, it's bluff. And most of the time, it's a bluff. Yeah. So I mean, that I I, I understand that, and then that also kind of gets into the the argument with the the old factor. Uh, region in the brain and we see that the olfactory sensors in Tyrannosaurus Rex is huge. It, it was is gigantic. gigantic. However, again, yeah, all carnivores have a great sense yeah, exactly. of smell. I was like, that That was, I pro- mean, that was the part how, of like the documentary. I mean, a shark, okay, a great white shark can smell uh, a drop of blood in a how many gallons of water? Right. From miles away. Plus then, you know, I like... I mean, the great white shark is not, you know, the top predator of the ocean, but it's pretty freaking close. pretty freaking close. I mean, even look at, like, terrestrial animals, too. Like, dogs, for example. Any any species of dog, really. The olfactory sensor in dogs, even, like, not real dogs, like pugs, is still massive compared to, like, humans. Massive compared to other animals but it has it's, to be it's that way it's kind of sad that a pug has a better sense of smell with a crushed face than a human yes. with a <laughs> with... normal sized nose well yes <laughs> <laughs> but I, I so the olfactory sensor that argument never held any water from me because like oh, it doesn't hold any water period right because every, I mean, every animal carnivore that you can think of has a great sense of smell. Right, they Crocodiles, have to. Crocodiles, sharks, lions, everything. Because there's two method. There's actually three methods that a carnivore uses to find food. It smells, it hears, and it sees. Yes. Well, T-Rex has binocular vision. Yep. It has the probably the greatest olfactory uh, or smelling apparatus known to a, any animal that in Ever. the fossil record. Yeah. We know that. And I'm pretty... I'm fairly certain it can hear uh, pretty well. I'm sure. I'm sure it was able I to mean, hear with, well. When you're standing, you know, what, 12 feet off the ground and you can tilt your head back in that uh, upper wind stream, you're going to smell whatever you want from miles. Yeah. Another T-Rex 
uh, Triceratops, a Montosaurus, uh, uh, Ankylosaurus. You're going to smell it, all that. And it's not going to be one of those, oh, he's smelling everything at once. No, he can literally pick out lock on each to a scent. Uh, scent, lock onto it, and go, that's what I want. True. So, that argument, it does play more into the idea of uh, T-Rex being primarily a scavenger, right? I, I think... The scent thing, yes, does give uh, well, sway to scavenger, but same, however, like was, we were saying... At the same time, it doesn't, because what if, what if it needed that olfactory sensor to smell a mate, right? Like, yeah, during mating season. I mean, what if it needed that olfactory sensor to, I, mean, I don't know, locate... These animals locate, would have huge territories just for right, themselves. to be able to smell another Let territory. Let alone if it had a mating pair of T-Rexes. I mean, um, I think... Uh, I think it was... I want to say... Uh, Robert Bacher, I think? The other... the Oh, the other one who was in... Uh, the other uh, guy that was for Jurassic Park, the one with the cowboy hat, long hair. Oh shoot, shoot, shoot! Oh, you mean in Jurassic in Lost World? No, it was the guy, the actual paleontologist that he was supposed to be representing. Oh, I well, think anyway, right. uh, yeah, that yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Uh, we'll show up a picture of him. Yeah, I'll pull uh, up a picture. But I think he said for like seven T Rex. Uh, on in like Florida, okay, the Everglades. Yeah. If we use the Everglades as basically a reserve for dinosaurs, sure. There could only be about like six T Rexes uh, in that area because not only the food source has to be uh, a large enough amount for a, pop, a healthy population, just a range of one animal in its own territory, and uh, you know it's like. Uh, for I think every predators there has to be at least like what two hundred uh, uh, herbivorous animals something for, like that for prey just for one carnivore right I mean the carnivore's not going to get a prey item every time it goes hunting exactly now. so there's going to be a lot of times the animal's going to ex- you know escape and it doesn't get its meal so it's one of those things is like when that's the case, scavenging is your next option. Right. That's and I think that's what we're getting at here is like it, it's not even a question. It, it's not like a black and white question. It's it's a really gray area cuz like one we'll never know, right? Because we we're not there. And then two, we won't ever it, it, when as as when you're studying ancient life one of the best things to do is to look to modern equivalents, right? To look to modern animal animals to see how they act, how they interact. Because in nature, not a lot changes. Yeah, the faces might change, but the roles are all still the same, well, right? Not only that, it's like different players in a in a in a play. Well, not only that, there's not an animal on this planet right now with the head with the brain of a reptile, but the body of a bird. Yes. I mean, they. The last time that was here was you know sixty five million years ago, when that. So you can't really choose from living animals. Right. It's hard to look at of what an animal that was that large as as a T Rex with a brain that looks like a banana. Yes. With the uh, features of a giant predatory bird. It's hard. It's really hard to determine. And what I was getting at was, there's no. It's a gray area because there's not. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Um, it was a very short train, Carl. It was a very short train, but when you look at we look to equivalents in nature, which is kind of a kind of a mistake sometimes because, like you said, there's nothing on the planet that's a good equivalent at this point in time. But we also look to nature to make inferences. And in nature, it's always a gray area. There's never a black and white. There's never... We we can, like, you look at a lion, you look at a grizzly bear, you look at any top predator in any environment, and it's like, oh, wow, look, this is the, this is the top predator. It hunts, 
it never scavenges. Of it's always going to scavenge. You're always going to find instances of predators scavenging, no matter what. I mean, that's just like I said, it's like giving up a free meal. That's like walking past a full refrigerator and not eating just because you don't like or because it's not your refrigerator. That's a that's a dumb argument. Um I'm still in the predatory camp though. I think primarily it was probably hunting, an active hunter. I think that it did scavenge. I'm sure that it did. I mean, all predators scavenge, but I think I think what pissed me off or well, what made me the most mad about Valley of the Rex is the way Jack Horner presented it. Like this was the like this is all this animal did. This animal could not hunt. This animal did not hunt because look at it how it's structured. Look at its biology. Look at how terribly it's set up for hunting. Okay, it has the same body plan as almost all theropods. I obviously there's like you you can look at things. There's minute uh, differences. Right, of course but... there's minute differences, but you look at it. It has the same body plan as all theropods. It has a bigger head than most theropods because it had bigger jaws. Well, look at the animals. Better that was bite living. power. Well, look at the animals that it was living with. Triceratops and Kylosaurus. These are big, thick, heavy-duty animals. You got to be able. You got to get through that, get through that uh, um, defense mechanism, especially with Ankylosaurus, where their entire back was, you know, bony plate armor. Yes. I mean, it's a walking tank. That's why they call it a, a walking tank. Yeah. So, I mean, so for a T-Rex, you're gonna need a bite for pressure. You're gonna need uh, somewhat a movability. Just to get not to get hit with that club, because I'm fairly certain that club's gonna break ribs or at least a femur yeah. if it hits. Yeah, absolutely. Probably give you a good concussion too if it hits you in the head. Yeah. Um, Triceratops, you're gonna have to try to get by, by those horns, and yes, they did use the horns for defense mechanisms as long as well as a sexual display with the frill. Uh, we have bite marks on Triceratops horns from a T-Rex. We have it on the frill from a T-Rex. Yep. Um, yeah, and there's also uh, bones that were more enveloped inside the body, like the um, uh, parts of the pelvis that had bit in from the T-Rex uh, in other cases, which, that yeah, that proves that not only was at the Triceratops were the favorite prey of a t-rex because they ate the neck muscles and stuff that's usually uh why we find a lot of skulls away from bodies yeah because you know you rip the head off and there you got basically a giant ribeye steak sitting there um but if you know a t-rex came up on a triceratops carcass he's going to be biting you know leftover grit uh the gristle um deeper bones and tendons and you're going to be breaking some of those bones to get to the marrow uh for which is a long energy storage uh to get you to the next uh kill yeah so yeah there's a lot of evidence that says t-rex not only was a predator but also a scavenger and that in the whole you know it was one or the other doesn't make any sense yeah and i think that's what got me the most about valley of the rex was that's also kind of the reason why I hate Jack Horner is because he gets on his mighty high horse and acts like he is the paleontologist. You know what I'm saying? He The only thing Jack Horner ever uh, that I've recently said that I actually agreed with was Pachycephalosaurus, uh, Draco Rex, and Stiggy Moloch all were just different growth stages of the same animal. Yes, and, and I agree with that too because you look at it and... Yeah, we we've already had like a discussion about that with the essentially with the Nano Tyrannus, like and and I do agree with, you know, his theory that sure, some of these animals that we look at that we think are different species might not be. But the way he acts and the way he presents his arguments w at least in the Valley of the Rex, I don't know if maybe you were to sit down and have an actual conversation with him if he would present it like how he presented it in the documentary. And, well, of course, they cut things. Yeah, but, the documentary cut it, uh, but cut the, and pasted conversations, pieces, to make it look like that, too. But the way that he presented it, and, and this is, again, what gets me on it, is he acts like he is the expert on all things related to Dinosaur. And don't get me wrong, he has a lot of experience. Obviously, he's done something right to stay relevant in the field for this long. 
but you there's know, always a gray area. You know the really funny part? Is he's going around saying that T-Rex was a scavenger, yet in Jurassic Park, The Lost World, he he actually had the T-Rex hunt people? Yeah. Well, to be, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. To be fair, the, the scavenger theory came out. He he came up with the scavenger uh, around theory. that time. Did he really? Yeah, around was, was it the uh, same time? I thought around it, the same time. I thought it was a lot. No, he put earlier more or newer. Uh, in JP three, he had the T Rex obviously scavenging. Yes. Uh, when you know Doctor Grant pulls back the uh, grass and the head pops up. Yes. Uh, but yeah, um, no, this debate was going on probably around the first movie, and when the second movie came out. It literally showed the T-Rex chasing and hunting people. I was like, so... What? <laughs> yeah. You like, know, you're, you're the paleontologist for this movie, but yet your whole scavenging thing just went in the opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Um, I guess preach... Or uh, do what you preach, right? <laughs> in, in that sense. Um, so, I think what we're boiling down to here is that we kind of believe in both. But we both still point to it being the top predator and being able to actually hunt more than it was a scavenger. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, screw you, Jack Horner. Uh, <laughs> look, and we, there's that. We know better than you now. Ha ha. Um, yeah, I didn't have to get uh, college debt for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Neither of us have college debt and we're here doing the same thing you're doing. How's that feel? Well... Then again, you've been on te television. Hey, you know what? I've been in some videos. I'm pretty popular. Um, Five people did not make you popular, Carl. Well, I was referring to, you know, my other gig with, with Nathan. Oh, okay. You know, where I'm in videos with a couple million views. But oh. enough self-plugging. Let's get back to the actual discussion. Uh, so what I think we boiled down to here was that we're both kind of in the same camp. Which is kind of unfortunate because I was hoping that we would be able to have a bit more of a debate instead of just like building off. I, it's fine to build off of each other's ideas. But I was hoping we'd have more of like an actual back and forth debate where you could be like, well, I think it's a scavenger because the olfactory sensor. And I could be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> well, I'm glad I denied you that, Carl. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to this, to this discussion? Would you like to say? Because, you know, it all it just it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, since we're on the subject of T-Rex, uh -huh. um, what do you think about that whole recent paper that came out about T-Rex might being three subspecies now? I think that it's completely plausible. Uh, I didn't read the paper, but did it say... So you didn't read the paper that I sent you for this podcast? Oh, was that for this one? It was... A I figured we can just loop it in with the whole T-Rex thing. Oh, I didn't realize that you wanted to cover that in... I thought we were just doing the scavenger predator. No, we're just doing T-Rex. Well, why don't you give me a brief synopsis? Uh, from what it looks like, they were... Uh, T-Rex, which was, you know, the original OG dinosaur, might actually be three subspecies. Like a Canadian version, a Montana version, and then like the lower oh. southern parts. Oh, yeah. That's totally plausible. Which I, I kind of agree. That's just speciation. I agree with. Uh, but I find it kind of funny, though, that, you know, people have been arguing. Yeah, I'm going bringing back the Nano Tyrannus. Every time. Yes. I, hey, you brought up the whole Jack Warner thing several times, so well, I'm bringing up Nano. Well, I don't like him, so. Yeah, well, I like the Nano, okay? <laughs> so, screw off. Um, <laughs> the I find it funny that paleontologists fought for years over the fact that Nano Tyrannus was a juvenile T-Rex mm -hmm. or its own species. Mm -hmm. Then the next, you know, m day I wake up and there's an article going, yeah, T-Rex might be three species. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so you can't, uh, can, uh, you are literally fighting each other for years over the fact that this might be a juvenile animal or an adult animal of its own species. Yes. But yet you all freaking agree overnight that T-Rex might be three species. That might be three species. Yeah, you know, that is kind of funny. I'm like, what? <laughs> I But no, I think that's totally plausible that, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex could be three no, I, subspecies. No, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. It makes total sense. Oh, yeah, it makes total sense because... When you have an animal with a range that's pretty much all in North America... It's literally just speciation um, at that it's point. It's literally a subspecies 
eating in its own environment. I mean, look at tigers. Well, that's I mean, literally the whole point of all the tigers in yeah. the world. I mean, that's how speciation works, right? <laughs> this is like biology 101 is like you have a you have a, a an original population per se, right? And then from that original population, it branches off. And then let's say a population gets isolated and then another population gets isolated. That's how speciation works. And it totally makes sense that if there was like a Canadian subspecies and a North American, sub, well, like a Montana subspecies and then like a, a, a Southwestern subspecies, it makes total sense. Oh, I'm not disagreeing with you at all there. I'm just saying it's kind of bonkers it, that a bunch of paleontologists that killed each other for years over, you know, Nano Tyrannus being a juvenile or T-Rex or a uh, its own species suddenly all woke up the next morning and decided that T-Rex is now three species. It's ironic. I mean, it's like, what what world did we wake up into? Yeah, where everybody is just kind of unanimously just, agreeing. Like, magically agreed with everybody. I'm like, did I miss something? I think that there should be a little bit more debate there, of course. You know, it's, a, it's always good. And that's why I enjoy doing these podcasts. I would hate doing it by myself because, like, it's more fun to talk to somebody who doesn't necessarily gr agree with you 100% because then you can both make your points. Oh, well, yeah, that's how you get... Uh, that's how you make some, discoveries. Well, not only that, but that's also how a lot of political problems started. You start putting yes men in a group. Yeah, that's how that's how things get solved is by sitting down with somebody who doesn't necessarily have the same opinion. So I think it's a really good idea that... I, I wish that... I'm sure that some paleontologists out there don't agree with that theory, um, but I wish more would... You, you're right, though. It is really funny that, you know, they've debated for years about Nano Tyrannus, and now all of a sudden it's just like, oh, yeah, well, this makes sense, so let's just do that. So, that's yeah. fun. <laughs> is that. Uh, I think that's it. Did we, Okay. Uh, so, did, did we want to talk about anything else, or did you kind of hit all your points? No, I think I'm good. I think I, I got what I wanted to say off my chest. Okay. Um, so, this is Josh. And this is Carl. Signing off.